Hey everybody, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program RP0. Uh, this is our last launch of this v Venus window, and there's 0 0.26, 0 0.25. Uh, this is just a life support resupply pod. Uh, it is a backup in case the one that is already in orbit uh, cannot reach the station because of uh, inclination issues and lack of fuel. So launching this one at the same time should give it relatively close to the same inclination upon arrival. Uh, that's what we're hoping for anyway, just a brief check of our staging and uh, yeah this one was built before we uh, got our new fairing textures so uh, unfortunately we're just going to have ugly gray fairings because I didn't load it back into the VAB and change that texture around anyway uh, SAS is on inclination of the moon is good throttle is set to full ignition looks like a good light clamps off and uh, we are going 1.10 uh, indicating to me that these are the uh, RD-171M and not the RD-172s down here, although we could open this up just to verify that. Um, not that it matters a whole lot, we have actually launched this exact same vessel to Mars, or to Venus. Well, well it's gone to Mars, too. It's actually just a copy-paste of the exact same design. It's gone both places, and so now we're just sending up another one. Um, like I said, it's a backup. Uh, it's kind of a nothing burger flight, and uh, routine as such. We'll likely just uh, speed through some of it and uh, maybe get to some interesting details of other things uh, for the rest of the episode. But uh, unless anything absolutely spontaneously stupid happens, I will pick all of you up uh, in order. So, uh, while we have this launch going, I thought we'd well, get a little fancy with it, but also uh, address the uh, error that we had with the Cosmos 228 mission, as we still have the Cosmos 1201 mission uh, still in Earth orbit, and uh, it may contain the same faulty part. I guess I should address that first. Um, the issue was to trace back to a uh, improper part installed on the 228 mission uh, that was not installed, or maybe it was installed on the uh, Mark 6K. Uh, it just uh, was surrounded by things that could sink the heat a little bit better. Uh, anyway, so we have to make some changes to our uh, 1201 mission that is still uh, in orbit. And as you can see, they've got about 10 days or so of life support remaining. Um, we can't get a mission to them that fast. Uh, the Shurukin does have a, an incredibly good turnaround time, uh, typically about 20 days or so, plus rollout time, etc., etc. Uh, so we will be diverting them to uh, Kawaii Proteto Station, uh, where we have an abundance of life support and uh, ample room for the uh, three orange suits, our all-star crew, to uh, get out and stretch around um, and maybe uh, enjoy their extended deployment. Uh, we are still operating within the bounds of the contract. Uh, typically those things give us about 90 days to complete, so we are well uh, within the reasonable time frame in which to uh, still get paid for this mission, which would be great. Uh, even if it were not to be the thing, our rescue plans would entail uh, absolutely making up the difference uh, with uh, another crewed vehicle, because, well, we're going to have to find some way of bringing them supplies, and, uh, well, we might as well fold as many things into a flight as we possibly can, including maybe a training mission uh, or two. Anyway, they have... Uh, waited a couple of days in orbit, so actually this launch is already done and gone, probably outside of uh, Earth SOI. Uh, I guess I just ruined the rest of the launch for you. Way to go. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> They've waited a few days in orbit. We are uh, about to make a burn to hopefully bring ourselves within uh, rendezvousable distances of Kawaii Proteto Station. It will require just a, another small adjustment at our uh, Ah, to inclination to uh, dial that in just a, a little bit closer. We we're not having very much luck touching it up on thrusters as I sat here and held uh, I, J, K, L, H, or N, or some various combination uh, of two of them trying to work down that uh, separation at closest approach. Uh, a little bit of kick from the engines gets us down to about three kilometers or so, uh, and then we'll try to touch the rest of this up on uh, thruster power alone. Uh, as you can see, our supply pod launch is going rather swimmingly. Um, I guess you really didn't need a, a heads up on any of that, but we will be getting back to that later. That's why it's picture in picture and not just a, a cut uh, or so. So, so uh, this 
didn't really take up enough time or wasn't interesting enough to fill its own episode, so we're just going to do this little mishmash thing. Uh, I hope it's not too irritating. Uh, a little bit of time warping around for our shuttle crew as uh, they've gotten that separation and closest approach down to uh, just a little over uh, 140 some odd meters and then uh, rotating into uh, match orbits with uh, Kawaii Protato Station. Uh, it does take a little bit of wiggling as I forgot to take the flight computer off of uh, normal? Or was it anti-normal? One of the two. Either way, eventually we get ourselves dialed in to our uh, retrograde relative vector and our uh, supply pod launch has just shed its boosters and opened up the fairing, which is extra good. Uh, everything over there going quite well. Um, amazingly enough, everything seemed to... Well, both these clips tend to seem to fit pretty well together. Alright, and uh, our shuttle crew has just made their burn to slow down a whole lot. We're going to rotate in and try to get ourselves uh, lined up with the docking port at least to um, some various degree or so. Uh, not much of a frame rate drop. Happy to report that this docking actually went uh, extraordinarily well. Um, now I've ruined all the aspects of the episode for you. Well, you know, be good at one thing. So uh, we'll get ourselves lined up with this long docking port uh, it sits at 90 degrees from the cupola and uh, try to dial ourselves in very uh, as best we can. Solar panels will get retracted so we don't go smashing those things up. The last thing we need is more busted stuff on this orbiter. And then the uh, nice, long, slow process of uh, inching ever closer to the station. Uh, a little bit of over-rotation there on my part, but uh, not so bad that we couldn't dial it in. And of course our roll is off, so we'll try to set that back to a uh, normalized vector also, and uh, then sit back from the keyboard and just uh, watch the approach happen. Thankfully, uh, a lot of this was actually uh, hands-off or so. Um, just a matter of biding time until we could get in close enough to actually have to hit the controls. And uh, yeah, once we're in closer, you get a much better grasp on how much correcting you need to do, which really wasn't that bad. We had a pretty solid approach. We were coming uh, underside of the station, so uh, adjusting up and then well, up relative. We were going to go underneath it. We need to come in alongside it, I guess, and then uh, back ourselves up uh, for what I had hoped to be a nice, easy, single-pass docking, which is... Um, I actually think I do a little better of these when I don't just stare at the nav ball and rely on that and seems counterintuitive that just eyeballing it sometimes works better for me, but it does help a whole lot when it's off axis so you can see around the spacecraft uh, and to line up your docking ports instead of trying to look through it, which I guess is where the nav ball uh, comes in the most handy. So a little bit of roll correction, a, a little bit of aft correction, and a little bit of pick pitch, pitch correction, and uh, Eventually, we'll start uh, trading some paint with that uh, docking port. Um, not too bad. We didn't have to bounce off it, pull back, and try again. We just needed to uh, get the lip of the port off the top of the cockpit. I do really wish that kind of had an interior rear view. That would be extra awesome. And docked. And uh, there you have it. So uh, while we're here, we might as well uh, offload this excess of uh, arizine and nitrogen tetroxide that we have. It will go to good use in Nemo or Dory or both at some point. Uh, make sure the excess life support supplies here but on uh, Kawaii Protato Station are uh, unlocked and available to us. We'll also just uh, move some fuel around uh, as we see fit. But our crew is uh, no longer in danger of suffocation, starvation, or dehydration. Uh, they've got basically a year's worth of supplies and uh, ample room to move around. So we'll get ourselves turned back over to this launch and to old me. All right, uh, 295 by 227. We're going to go ahead and separate off the core. Good day, sir. Garbage collection. Let's uh, get our panels kicked out here. Oh, yeah, they are all crooked. I guess this is something that I just... Uh, I made a uh, sub-assembly of the DN6B Type L for long duration. The, the uh, 
pipe intended to hang on to this B upper stage until it arrives at its destination and use some of it for uh, for breaking. And uh, it looks like all of them are screwy, not just the uh, one that went up with our uh, station. That's very interesting. So, oh no, I didn't. Yeah, I want to stage in the HT3. Let's just make sure that's good to go. Excellent. And then uh, let's plot our course for Venus. Which will uh, likely happen right around here at the Day-Night Terminator. I'm not even going to try to go for Mech Jeb at this point. Because uh, I know he's just going to tell me to wait here for two years. We're not going to do that because we have uh, boiling off hydrogen fuel. Goodbye, Rendezvous Planner. Uh, let's plot a node. Burn straight at sun, please. Oh, yeah, and look at that. Our ascending node is behind us in our orbit. All right, there we go. Uh, 3,500 meters per second, almost on the button. Uh, we've got a .04 in there somewhere. Uh, RCS to arm. I don't know where you think you're telling yourself to go there, buddy. Uh, I have told you to do nothing. I would appreciate it if you would wait for me to tell you where to point before pointing somewhere. But, you know, that's fine. We got 14 minutes until we need to light our engine. Uh, five kilometers per second in this stage, which is surprising as all hell. Uh, maybe we can take some of this HG3 stage with us and use it for capture. Um, we do still have, of course, this heat shield. Uh, we've tested this procedure before uh, as far as an aero capture only entry, and it does work. Um, how much we'll need if we can use some of this stage to break into orbit, I am not entirely sure, but I, I guess we'll figure that part out. Um, I mean, really, if we can hang on to this and then just we have the heat shield for uh, lowering our orbit, uh, which we'll probably need to do. There's Mars. Where's our node? It's 14 minutes, and it was almost straight down the prograde vector. Uh, we just moved the node around the orbit to avoid radial in, radial out. Uh, excellent advice that was given to me on the last live stream, by the way. Oh, uh, overshot. Overshot by a bunch. All right, three minutes to go. Let's uh, ullage in this HG3. If you could just point at the node, sir, please and thank you. Uh, risky. Come on. Stable. Ignition. That's a solid light. And we're off. And a little more radial in than I'd like, but uh, Venus should be somewhere on. Uh, it's going to be a couple of degrees above us. It looks like way below the horizon. There she is. We're coming for you, sweetie. Now the uh, HG3 at least performed uh, absolutely nominally during this burn, although uh, I guess while I'm in the habit of spoiling the episode for you, um, it was not exactly to spec or to node. The uh, margin of error of getting from Earth to Venus is insanely small, uh, a lot of this because uh, Venus is so close and the Delta V requirements uh, going to or from are just uh, a little bit off, so like a meter per second uh, extra or not enough here at Earth or a second or two too late can really have some profound effects on whether or not you are actually uh, going to Venus today. Um, yeah, so as you can see here, it's uh, just not really going as well as we would like. There's our escape from uh, Earth's gravity, and uh, hopefully we'll be coming up on a encounter here real soon. So uh, here's old me to ruin it for you. Well, we have a swing and a miss. Well, that's good. Yeah, I guess being that far off the node really didn't uh, help our cause any. Um, 
Sun. I don't know where you're trying to point the Sun, but if you could knock it off, that'd be great. Uh, we're going to go back to the map view and replot. Uh, looks like a, another oversight here with this outdated model of lifter. Uh, we only have two ignitions on our upper stage. See, so how we need to do a 300 meter per second correction. Um, I've, and we have our heat shield for arrow capture. I think we're just going to go ahead and use it uh, as much as I don't want to. Uh, this whole window. Jeez. All right. And ignition. Shut down. Yeah, that's uh, that's as good as we're going to do on this thing. So we're going to go ahead and uh, jettison the HD3. Maybe we'll uh, spend some of its thruster fuel. How much of that do we have left? I mean, not a whole lot, but I guess... I don't know. Since we were late on the node, everything went horribly awry. <sighs> We can try to just do a little bit of adjustment on its thrusters, see what we can't figure out, just so we're not spending some of our orbital maneuvering fuel on trying to get to our destination. And so uh, while I am off tinkering with nodes, I figured we might as well uh, touch base again with what we're doing about our uh, pseudo-stranded crew on uh, Kawaii Proteto Station. Uh, this is, of course, the uh, Shuruken Mark 6K. Uh, we are, this is typically what we use to bring crew to and from the station for deployments out to our uh, lunar station and then our subsequent surface base. Uh, it does, however, have uh, ample cargo capacity and, of course, of course uh, room for seven Kerbals which uh, if we go up with a crew of three or maybe even four, we still have room to bring back our initial three uh, should our repairs uh, not be up to standard. So uh, in an effort to resolve the issue with uh, the faulty part uh, overheating, uh, we're going to try to bring up some uh, radiators uh, to attach to it directly, and uh, also a probe core that could be uh, mounted pretty much uh, anywhere in the cargo bay in, f in case uh, we want to do a uh, automated landing sequence uh, instead of risking the crew and bringing them back all on our own. Uh, you'll see in the picture-in-picture -picture view, we did just uh, jettison the HG3 stage and are now touching that up on RCS. Uh, we're going to back to the VAB sequence here. We're going to try to tuck some radiators into this bay. Um, while we're at it, we might as well bring up the uh, Mark IV solar panel that needs to be replaced on the Nemo that is on station currently anyway. Uh, we got plenty of room to do that. Uh, also, lots of uh, hand cordless drills. Lots of DeWalt's. Uh, it occurs to me that the crew could be doing some work up there right now, but I neglected to put a drill uh, anywhere in there. So after I'm done here, I think I'm going to go change the default save files for all crewed vehicles to include at least one drill. And of course, we'll need the Wookiee flag for this since this is a uh, Wookiee aerospace vehicle. And uh, we'll close that up and get this added to the build list. And uh, thanks to our spare parts pool and uh, the successful flight of uh, the K earlier, we can turn this mission around in about 15 days, which means our crew's wait on the station will not be that long. Anyway, with uh, all the nodes adjusted and uh, this thing finally on course to where it is actually supposed to be, we'll set up the comms and call it an episode. Thanks for hanging out, everybody. I really appreciate it. And I'll see all of you in the next one. So until then, see you later.